Hey there, I am Hitad from 3D Land. Welcome back to another video. And today in this video, we're gonna be learning which IDE or code editor is best for .NET development with C Sharp. So today's video is the second episode of the Learn C Sharp series, where I teach C Sharp each and every concept of C Sharp for absolutely free. You won't even have to pay a cent for this. If you haven't watched my first video where I explain you deeply what is C Sharp, how it works behind the scenes, and a lot of the stuff about C Sharp, make sure to watch the first video. And without any time waste, let's move on. Difference between an IDE and a code editor. This is very important to know because most developers don't. Like, not most, but many developers don't know. And because of that, they get confused. Let's learn what an IDE is. An IDE is a complex code editor with many of the features like debugging, version control, etc. They provide a lot of great features. Visual Studio and Rider are some of its examples, are two of its examples. And let's move on to code editor. A code editor is a simple text editor, with the help of which we can edit some source code. Now this is pretty obvious because a simple text editor. You can even use Notepad as code editor or Notepad++, but if you are good to choose VS Code or Sublime Text, they are better choices. And let's move on to options for C Sharp. Now these are going to be options for which you can use IDE, which IDEs are available and support C Sharp development. Now, Microsoft Visual Studio. It's my personal favorite IDE. JetBrains Writer Editor. Not my personal favorite, but it is a pretty good IDE. But I don't use it. Microsoft Visual Studio Code. It is a code editor, not, of course, an IDE. And at last, Sublime Text, which is very popular amongst web developers or Python developers. Let's move on and learn about the pros and cons of Visual Studio. Visual Studio's got a great intelligence. This is important. And I'm a fan of its intelligence. It's so good. You can browse through namespaces and a lot of the features. Great customization. You can customize each and every part of Visual Studio. Fonts, colors, themes, you've got all. Visual Studio has got awesome debugging tools. This is important for debugging, but I don't use debugging that much. It has got a lot of other development tools, like code refactoring, you've got Syntax highlighting, which is pretty obvious. Every code editor and IDE has it. And you've got intelligence is the most basic one. You've got class diagrams and a lot more features. Free version of VS is available. Like this is pretty good news for developers who are developing free who just don't like the sublime text messages and also don't like VS Code. Like, it is annoying at times. But VS Community is a free version of VS. You can even get, you can even buy the VS Professional or Enterprise, but you know, you've got all tools we need for the purpose of Learn C Sharp. So, I'm going to be using VS Community and not any other IDE slash code editor. Now, it may take up to 35 to 40 gigs of storage on full installation. I have installed half of the workloads, almost half. 
and it takes about 15 to 20 gigs on my system which is pretty big like for systems that are not capable of that much storage VS is not recommended for them it also requires high system specifications like it takes almost like 500 to 500 MBs to 1 gig of memory while running like I've tested this with unity they both are like allocating 500 MBs to 1 gigabyte of memory so you're gonna need good system specifications also VS will run faster if you have installed it on SSD it's hard to find or navigate some options features for this first time like now that is for beginners not for the intermediate or advanced level and don't worry because I'm going to teach you the basics of Visual Studio and don't worry next up in our list is the writer editor it is developed by JetBrains which is also the developer of other products like IntelliJ IDEA, ReSharper, DotPeak. Now DotPeak is not that much famous, but it's it's pretty good. Let's look at the pros and cons of Writer Editor. It provides a smooth, efficient IDE for developing .NET application. I have to say, it is far more efficient than Visual Studio. It has less time for opening up and it is also got code refactoring which is important for some projects it integrates well with other Japan print products like if you've got V sharper with dark theme then also the themes will match between these tools in a lot of other stuff not just the themes it integrates well with the Unity game engine. Now they are officially supporting the Rider editor. And you've got a lot of tools with them. So it's easy to use it with Unity game engine. It has got good searching and navigation facilities. That's pretty good. No free or freemium version available. All those person like me who just want to try out the software or game before buying it they can understand the pain that you can't get a free trial or a free version or a freemium version for any software or game like that is the exact situation with writer editor you don't get any trial you don't get any free version you don't even get any freemium version which is quite painful for some users. It has got a lack of some debugger tools, which is a bit saddening for some developers. Built in performance tools do not work on Linux. Now, Linux developers, don't be that much sad. I'm not gonna be using Writer Editor. You can use VS Code for Linux, it's pretty good for that. Also, VS is not available on Linux. Rider here is a great .NET IDE for professionals who want productivity. Visual Studio is for professionals or beginners or intermediate ones who just want to learn or either make something. And it is powerful enough. Now let's look at the next one on our list which is VS Code or Visual Studio Code. You will hear VS Code more often than Visual Studio Code because people like to call it like that. Let's look at the pros and cons of VS Code. It is having a wide support for many programming languages. You can basically develop an app or whatever with any programming language you know like PHP, Java, C Sharp, C++ um, 
I don't know. I forgot some names, but you can use with every language. Not every, but almost all language, but it does not have support for binary. So that is a bit sad. It is also very lightweight, which is good for some people who can't afford installing Visual Studio on their system. Like for PCs that are not really that much powerful enough, this is very helpful. And it's got auto formatting, which I love. Like auto formatting, it's pretty good. So I use it. It's got intuitive UI. Even this is an awesome feature. You've got a clean UI, you can navigate very easily. Also, VS Code is a cross-platform code editor. You can use it on Windows, Mac, Linux, all of them. Let's look at the cons. The debugger isn't powerful enough. Like, this is a very important part of development. But debugger isn't powerful enough. That's going to be painful for some developers. It has got... A slow launch time like it does not take an eternity to launch like Visual Studio but at least it takes quite some time considering that it is just a simple IDE not an IDE but a simple code editor that really sucks for me I don't know for yours it has got some extensions that can be inconsistent inconsistent in quality like sometimes you get some extensions that are broken or they break the quality of the actual product by Microsoft and like all of us we don't like it we don't like it at all and let's move on with our final but not the least code editor sublime text Sublime Text is a pretty well-known code editor amongst the web and Python developers. Like, I'm not saying that only these developers use it, but I'm saying that they are rather popular there. Like C Sharp developers and C++ ones don't use it much. So, let's look at the pros and cons of it. It has great keyboard shortcuts and multi-selection options. Yeah, that's that's good for people who like to use shortcuts for faster development, faster navigation. This increases productivity. And it's good. I like it. I don't use Sublime Text that much, but I know it's got a pretty great package manager installation process for easily extending functionality. Like the VS Code, it has got extensions, but they are rather called packages or plugins. It has got a package manager with the help of which you can, you can navigate and get some packages. It has a wide variety for support of many programming languages, C Sharp, C++, most of them like VS Code. You've got almost all of the programming languages you think already having syntax highlighting, auto completion, basic features and can easily work with multiple projects without confusion. This is pretty good. You can work amongst many projects, multiple projects without having that much confusion. Super easy to use for basic text manipulation. It is pretty good and I generally use it for opening something fast. Like, like for example, let's say a XML file, an XML file or a JSON file. I'd rather use VS Code for JSON because I have one in extension installed for JSON which makes it pretty good. So I'd rather use it, but for basic text manipulation. You can use YAML, I don't know, I'm sorry if I pronounced it 
wrong. So you can use it with XAML, BIAML. I don't know how do I pronounce those, but you get the idea. You can use it for basic text manipulation, and it opens very fast, like just like Notepad. But it is most well known amongst developers, just because it often prompts a pop-up box which tells you to purchase the paid version. It is very annoying for developers, you know. Like, they get annoyed and that's the main reason I don't use Sublime Text that much. It cannot highlight a particular portion of text. It is minor but it affects so let's see, working with the command palette takes some time to get used for a non developer. Like, if you are very new to programming, then it's, it is going to take some time to learn the command palette and a lot of the stuff. And that's it. We covered all the pros and cons of each and every IDE slash code editor that we can use or C sharp development. Once more I'm telling you that I've not included Notepad Plus Plus and Notepad because they are not meant for handling such high scale projects. They're meant for just editing a simple text file or whatever. So that's it and also I'm gonna remind you that I'm gonna be using Visual Studio 2019 community version for the purpose of the tutorial series for Learn C Sharp. And I won't switch the IDE. And yep, if you're on Linux, then what could be your best option? Sublime Text or VS Code? That's the only options that you have considering that you're not gonna pay for writer editor also if you already have a writer license you're gonna get good value from it and yep that's it for today's video and in the next video we'll be covering how to set up Microsoft VS 2019 community version on Windows PC so, I think the process of doing that between Mac and Windows is pretty similar, but we're gonna discuss that in the next video, not now. And thank you for watching.